Grass-fed versus grain-fed beef starts in the digestive system of a ruminant animal. A rumen is an organ that is used to ferment grass that creates bacteria that the animal can then extract in their intestines. When you feed an animal grain, it not only gives them a food source that they can't extract this nutrition from, it raises the acidity of this rumen. Raising the acidity of the rumen creates acid-resistant bacteria, and then they have to give the animal antibiotics. This is effectively why you can get sick from eating meat. The type of salmonella and E. coli that occurs in these antibiotic resistant animals is drastically different than the type of salmonella or E. coli on your local farm. Not only are these animals sick, their metabolism is getting ruined, these animals can develop cancer, and different animals are effective in different ways. A cow or a chicken absorbs nutrients differently, so the omega-3 to omega-6 ratio in the fat of these animals is going to be drastically worse than a cow. And this is why a lot of people on the carnivore diet feel better eating beef because of the omega-3 to omega-6 ratio in the beef. And then those same people will say, oh, well, you shouldn't eat grass-fed meat. Well, what you're essentially doing by going from grain-fed to grass-fed is what you're doing by going from eating chicken or pork to grain-fed beef. It, it doesn't really make a lot of sense in that context. Grass-fed beef is far more nutritious and has a better fatty acid profile than grain-fed meat. Uh, it's not a crazy significant difference if you start saying, oh, you should eat this or that or fish. But when you're eating two to three pounds of meat a day, it is the sole determining factor. In regards to omega fatty acids, arachidonic acid, a prostaglandin, which is an inflammatory mediator, is used in a lot of biological processes, and that is higher in grass-fed meat. Grass-fed meat is also lower in omega-6 fatty acids. It can also be as much as 10 times higher in the omega-3 alpha linolenic and EPA fatty acids. DPA and DHA are about four times higher and omega-6 to omega-3 ratio in grass-fed is usually somewhere between one and two, like 1.4 to 1.8, whereas grain-fed is between eight and 13. The combination of the slightly lower omega-6 content of grass-fed beef and drastically higher omega-3 content makes the omega-3 to omega-6 ratio in this food something that is closer to what we would have consumed in our ancestors. Conjugated linoleic acid, the form of linoleic acid that occurs in beef, can be as much as five to 10 times higher. It is proven to have various health benefits, and there are actually 28 different types of CLA that all have different biological mechanisms. It has been shown to alleviate non-alcoholic fatty liver disease in rats, it improves overall metabolism, it's anti-cancer, obesity, diabetic, hypertensive, meaning it prevents lifestyle diseases, and as we can imagine, these metabolic benefits lead to modest weight loss. The carotene, the plant form of vitamin A, as well as the retinol, the animal form of vitamin A content of the meat can also be five to 10 times higher. Vitamin E is typically three to five times higher in grass-fed meat, and there is a lack of data on things like vitamin C, vitamin K2, vitamin D3 in meat, but we can assume they are all several times higher in the grass-fed meat, and this is so important. When you consume grain-fed meat with the altered omega-6 ratio, you're causing more inflammation, you're creating possible oxidative stress. Grass-fed meat has more of the vitamins that reduce oxidative stress, so it's a compounding factor. Not only does grass-fed meat have a better omega-3 to omega-6 ratio, it also has more vitamins, therefore antioxidants in the body. Now, if you only wanted to eat grain-fed meat, could you supplement some antioxidants? Could you focus on certain foods that have better omega-3 ratios like wild-caught fish? I would personally only eat mackerel or herring, very cheap wild-caught fish if I was on a super tight budget. But what we're going to do now is taste and look at grain-fed versus grass-fed, ribeye and fat, uh, go over the differences, and explain why some people prefer the taste of grain-fed meat. Uh, one thing you will notice is the color of this meat. This is an indication of the vitamin and mineral content of the meat, how the animal was raised. Uh, if you guys want to go down in the comments and look at the studies I'm providing, you will notice that sometimes, even if an animal is on grass, the nutrient content isn't that much higher. So if the animal isn't getting high quality pasture, then the nutrient content will suffer. That's why beef slaughtered in the summer is going to have darker yellower fat and have a higher vitamin content than beef slaughtered in the winter. So this obviously grain fed on the left is from a local supermarket. The grass-fed on the right is both from a local farm. No antibiotics, naturally raised. The first thing you'll notice is, wow, this ribeye is huge. And even if you can say, oh, okay, well, there's a little more here and they trimmed a little more of this off, 
it's still huge. It shows how much larger the animal was because of the antibiotics, the grain they're feeding it. It's like a super fuel. Uh, you'll notice in the fat, there's the carotene color, there's the yellowness. The flesh of the meat is much darker in the grass-fed animal, indicating possibly a higher mineral content. Uh, the fat in this grass-fed animal, it's not the best quality. Off-white beige, but you'll notice the fat in the grain-fed animal is this stark white color. And if you touch the fat of the grain-fed animal, it's like a rock. But if you touch the fat of this, um, if I hit this grass-fed fat, it's soft. It goes down. This grain-fed fat, it's like a rock. It's, it's gristle. This is a little softer, but the grain-fed fat is so unnatural. Now, this is actually a darker grain-fed steak. I'm sure you guys have seen pink meat in the supermarket. It's completely crazy. Pork is supposed to be like this color too, but the pork we have is, is almost white. And the chicken we eat should be much darker too, because we're feeding these animals such poor quality stuff. Indigenous people prepared their food in every single way. Raw, cooked, fermented, steamed, fried, grilled, roasted, you name it, they did it. They did always eat some form of raw food. And if you shot a deer and you decided to cut open that deer and tasted every part of the animal, different foods would have different palatability. In the case of muscle meat, compared to something like marrow fat or fat, in the context of a wild animal, doesn't taste too good. The organs, the fat taste much better than the muscle meat. But in the context of our modern system, this ribeye does not occur in wild animals. Animals don't store fat on their rib sections. This is a result of breeding animals. Animals store fat in the suet, around the kidneys, around certain organs. Uh, so it's definitely unnatural. And the reason people like grain-fed over grass-fed is because they're cooking it. Raw grain-fed steak will always taste worse. Raw grain-fed fat will always taste worse. And grain-fed fat always tastes worse in general. Uh, so we're gonna taste this side by side. As much as you guys don't like to think I am objective, I am. And I will be completely honest and transparent with this. So first, we're going to taste the fat on the grain-fed ribeye. Has like um a mild beef flavor with some type of chemical I can't distinguish. Like plastic or like chlorine. No, it's almost like ethanol. It's like corny flavored. So now I'm gonna try the, the grain fed beef fat. And guys, this this is, is not this does not look good. Does not look good. I bought some grain fed beef fat last week as a trial run, and this smells much better than that one did. It's not that bad. So the part of the animal that they took this grain-fed beef fat from is actually not too bad of a quality, but it definitely has an off plasticky flavor to it. Let's try another piece of it. Okay, so I can't even cut this. It just has like an off corn taste. It's mild in flavor, uh, but no one should be eating this grain-fed beef fat. But the grain-fed beef fat on that ribeye steak is definitely way worse than the other one. So. Now I'm going to try the fat on the grass-fed ribeye. Wow. The difference in flavor is astonishing. When I eat that grain-fed beef fat, I don't really taste much. It's like hard, plasticky, tiny bit of corn flavor, some sort of chemical. That grass-fed beef fat, you taste the grass, you taste the nuttiness. It's rich, it's soft. It's such a contrast, it's amazing. So let's try the beef fat. What the, oh my God. This tastes like, nut, the, the flavor notes are nutty. Reminds me of sweet stuff. It's rich. It's so, so tasty in its raw state. It's unbelievable. That grass-fed beef fat I bought for $2.50 a pound. The grass-fed ribeye was expensive. I don't usually buy grass-fed ribeye, though. I usually get cheap cuts. And the ribeye steak was $10 a pound. So if you guys are saying you can't afford this grass-fed beef, then, you know, try to do sourcing. I personally kill myself working three jobs to be able to afford my diet. So that's me. But now we're going to cook this up. And you guys will see why people prefer grain-fed meat.
Master Chef Frankie Boy is back. And for those of you guys who don't know, I was actually on Master Chef season nine, first episode. I've worked in New York City restaurants for a while, so I got a little, you know, going on. So we have the ribeye steak and the grass-fed steak. They're charred very similarly, seasoned with salt in the same way. So I'm going to take a cut from the middle of the ribeye. I'll show you guys the cooking temperature. And the grain-fed ribeye has more marbling throughout the center, so it's likely going to be more tender. And this is the temperature on the grain-fed ribeye. It's very, very rare. It's so tender. It's like crazy. It falls apart in your mouth. The, the weird thing is, I don't really taste much besides the grill flavor. I don't really taste any meat. When I eat that grain-fed steak, I taste char, I taste salt, and I get some texture. I don't actually taste the beef. So here I have the grass-fed steak. It looks redder, but that's because of the color of the meat. It's about the same temperature. This is still super tender. Sometimes the grass-fed ribeyes can be a little tougher, but this isn't. It's definitely, it's not as tender as the grain-fed ribeye, but it still falls apart in your mouth, so I don't see the point. The flavor is more complex. I actually taste the meat. I taste some minerals. I don't just taste the grill. But here's the thing. Both of these are pretty good. Someone might prefer one over the other. But if you had this meat in its raw state, it would be world, world, world of a difference. Uh, that's the point I try to make to people. It's definitely important to realize the nutrition is stored in the fat. So if a grain-fed ribeye has more fat and a grass-fed ribeye is very lean, the grain-fed ribeye might actually have more nutrients overall. But if you're just comparing similar fat ratios or just pure fat itself, the grass-fed will always generally win out. Foods like liver, organs, like grain-fed beef liver is lower in vitamins. It's probably more bitter. Uh, the reason I didn't do a liver comparison was because there's not as stark of a color and textural difference. It's mostly just the taste. I might do a bone marrow comparison in the future. I just haven't been able to get some really high quality grass-fed bone marrow. Once I do, the grain-fed versus grass-fed bone marrow is a huge, huge. Out of all the grass-fed versus grain-fed foods you can try, fat and bone marrow, anything that is fat, has such a different flavor and taste. I could probably show you guys some butter and cream, but I've compared grass-fed versus grain-fed butter in the past. I've done that, so you guys can look that up on my channel. If you do want to see it again, let me know. Uh, outside of that, if you guys would like to support the channel, please like, subscribe, share the video, hit that bell icon down below so you get notified when Frankie Boy is going on. If you guys do want to support the channel, Patreon is a great way to get personalized question support as well as help me. I do have an Amazon shop down in the comments as well. That's where you can find my salt, uh, various things I use in my day-to-day -day life, especially cooking, some cookware. If you guys are on Twitter, Instagram, I'm always on there. I'm posting every day. Give me a follow, guys. And last but not least, if you guys do want to reach out to me for one-on-one -on -one consultations in regards to improving your overall health through diet, sun, water, and exercise, you can shoot me an email, frankatufano at gmail.com, or contact me through the form on my website below. You guys enjoy the rest of the week.